you very much, Jennifer. I'd like to thank you, Jennifer, for inviting me to participate in this exhibition. I really feel quite special for, <laughs> for your invite. You're special. And i um, very happy to be here in Regina. I'm originally from Toronto. I was born there. My parents are from Guyana. They traveled to Toronto in 19, like the late 1960s. And a lot of my work, I find, stems from the movement of them uh, and my family from the Caribbean to Canada. So for that reason, I always show pictures of my family um, at the beginning of any talks that I do. Um, not only for the fact that I think in these photographs, um, these folks, so young back then, they do look like, you know, they were um, preparing for something that they really did not know what was to become. So they came to this country, my mom, this is before I was born, and the whole reason they came to Canada was for a so-called better life for themselves as well as for um, the children that they did not even have yet. I also like these old photographs for the texture that they have, the cracks and the creases in the corners and the waxy feel they have on the surface. And I find that a lot of, especially my recent work, has that kind of quality, um, intentionally and sometimes unintentionally. So this is an image of my mother. As I said, this is before I was born, uh, sitting in the basement of somebody's home listening to music. Um, there was a, at one point I had done a project on the basement, and basement parties as a place where folks would come together and um, form, you know, like try to find a community here in Canada that they had back home. And so they're kind of uh, uh, recreating that experience here. This is an image of my father, the same evening, um, the same record situation in the background, uh, just chilling with his shirt and his flip flops. <laughs> So um, in the late 90s, I had started a series called Cool Pose. It was, uh, I had started doing drawings. I'm, I'm showing these pictures to show how, although I was initially a drawer in charcoal, that a lot of the qualities of my work now has the same kind of resonance that they did in a different medium back then. This is a series called Cool Pose. Um, I did this series of uh, black folks in the community in Toronto that I, that I hang with. And um, the first image is of an image of a person with a blank gaze and that's not exposing their emotion. And the second image uh, is an image of a, pers of a person wearing a mask but is um, subduing, is, is hiding the emotions being felt behind that gaze. This is another piece from the series called Cool Pose. I had also looked at old photographs of friends of uh, my family as well as friends, their family, of when they had first come to Canada. And I had done a series called Stance, which is also a series of charcoal drawings. These are all very large pieces, about 40 or 50 inches by 30 inches. And uh, this series was to show the similarities between all of these people and how Caribbeanness still resonated from them, although they had moved from the Caribbean. Then I had started a series called Smiths. Now the Smiths are a series of uh, Afro-headed characters with the Smith section of the phone book transferred in their faces. Uh, the idea behind this series was to mock a note, this notion of a monolithic black community, that communities um, of certain races or any communities are, are the same, all the individuals are the same. So I'm mocking this idea. So I would create these on small blocks of wood. Again, I would treat, create this contour drawing of these um, characters, and then I would transfer the Smiths section of the phone book in, the, in their faces. So I saw the Smiths as you know, this group of so many people. It's the largest section of the phone book. Yet all of these individuals in them were different individuals within this whole group. I started to take these Smiths and put them into um, different visual narratives. This is a piece called Fela Sleeping. So Fela Kuti was a high life uh, performer in Nigeria. And uh, every time a person would go, and he was also like an activist, and he had all these people on stage with him. And he would perform for hours and hours. And then he would need all of these hours to sleep to recoup. 
and the Smiths here, they, I had them as the, the people who would come to see Fellow and to talk to him, but had to wait for all of these hours before he woke up. Um, I had started to do some animations with the Smiths, some playful animations. So this is just uh, one of the frames of one of the animations I created, which I can show you at the end of the talk. This piece is called Hemoglobin. And um, I, at one point, I had gone to, I had st spent a year in South Africa. I was living a year in South Africa. And when I had come back to Toronto, there was all of these, um, these, uh, these articles and uh, people were worried about a lot of the gun violence that was happening in Toronto. And I had learned that a friend of mine, her son was killed by gun violence at a club. And so I approached a friend who was a poet and I had asked him if he could write a poem that expressed the feelings felt in the community upon hearing of another young person dying from gun violence. So from each line of that poem, I had illustrated, I had illustrated each line of the poem. So here are the people who are the Smiths, are the community members, and then the silhouettes represent the young people who were killed by gun violence. And then the ones with the mass are those who were doing those violent acts. This is another piece from that series. These pieces are also 60 inches wide, I guess, by 40 tall. Um, this is called, uh, I can't remember, but I think the word feel is in the title. And it is really about, um, uh, it's about nurturing all the people of one community, even the ones who are doing things that may not be so right, or may, may be wrong, but how, we all need this kind of love and care in the community. I had done a uh, residency in Trinidad called Alice Yard. And um, as part of that residency, I created um, this mist out of aluminum. Aluminum. I created these pieces called aluminum stands, and I had them just placed throughout the, the, um, the ground of the uh, the residency, and then I created a, uh, a wall transfer and a drawing in a small gallery space they had at the space there. So this was really the first large-scale transfer I did on the surface of any kind of architecture at all. The Smiths, I also put in these, um, I was always looking at movement. I look at movement not only about, as I said before, my parents moving from the Caribbean to here, but also movement in terms of protests, movement as in a movement, movements that can change uh, injustice. And so around this time, there were a lot of, uh, you know, these marches that were happening in the States and here uh, because these young people were killed by police officers. And so this piece is called Gathered and in Procession. And, it's a, and it was a, this is just a detail of a triptych that I did of the Smiths moving in procession with each other. And then I started to grid the Smiths. So knowing that the grid in modern art is considered something that fixes things, I wanted to, to use this idea that identity cannot be fixed or determined upon a group, and I wanted to put them into this grid form. So, so I so I gridded the Smiths into I gridded the Smiths, and then I started to transfer large images of people, realistic representations of people, into these gridded Smiths that are mocking this notion of a monolithic community. These pieces are 48 inches by 60 inches. So I'll just explain what a photo-based gel transfer is. So the image that you're seeing here and all the, the newspaper, image, the, the phone book images in the faces, I have taken a print of them. So I take a picture, I take a picture and then I print it off. And then I cover the image with gel gloss medium. Then I cover the surface that I'm working on with the same medium. I put them together face to face. I wait for it to dry. 
and then I wash off the paper and the ink is left behind. So in this piece, I had created the grid, drawn all the Smiths, and then I transferred the large images onto the Smiths that are gridded, and then I transferred in each of those faces that section of the phone book into their faces, one by one. This is another piece called From Life, and it's, uh, I think this is 68 inches by 48 inches. This is also from the From Life series. The same. Now later on I started to look at movement a little more literally, and again looking at themes like Caravana, which is a big carnival that happens in Toronto, it's a big Caribbean carnival. Caravana started in 1967. It started by a lot of folks from the Caribbean who had just moved to Toronto, specifically from Trinidad, because it does stem from the carnival in Trinidad. That first carnival started on, uh, on it started on University Avenue, no, it started on Bloor Street, and then traveled down Queen, uh, Young Street, then went along Queen Street, and then ended up in, in City Hall. And City Hall is their backdrop. So the point was to make this message that although these group of people did not have such a like, large political clout there, they were still very present. So I always consider Carnival as this movement of presence. As well, at this time, there were protests happening around gun violence around young people and police officers shooting young people. And so all of those things about the, the movements of people and the strength from the movement of people together and what can happen when, that, when, that, um, when you see all, these, all of these people accumulate together were a lot of the influences behind some of this work. And this is the final piece. So how I created this piece, it's an animation that I can show you also at the end, was I, um, I had just drawn from, I had just continued to add these characters one by one, and I took a snap of them after I added each character. And so it, it's a stop motion animation. And so every time I added more characters, I would ta take another image of it, and then together we'll create this build up of a, 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 an accumulation of people over a period of time until, like in this last image, things begin to sparkle and twinkle, almost like constellations or curly hair. I started to look at plants and the movement of plants, um, a lot of tropical plants. These are large drawings that I used to do in my studio when I was uh, doing my master's at university at uh, U of T. I had people come into the studio and I had them move in front of my camera at a low shutter speed and so when you do that you capture the movement of people. And all of this I was just trying to find a way to talk about identity in terms of movement but in a very literal way. And so after taking these photographs I would create these drawings from them also because I was missing drawing. I was doing a lot of these transfers and I was missing and I wanted to get back in drawing, but then I obviously go back into transfers. So what I ended up doing was to making a grid of all these people who were moving and then I printed them off and then cut them, off, cut them individually one by one and transferred them into a grid, again for them to resist that uh, fixidity that the grid does. These are just uh, obviously details of the, the piece that was shown before, which is 40 inches by 60 inches. I also did an image of myself when I was, when I was taking these photographs. I created a photograph, I did a photograph of myself and it came out blurry like this. And so I enlarged it and transferred it to uh, a panel, uh, knowing that the the effect would have a similar effect to um, old photographs, old film processes, this kind of movement that comes from within, and creating another, um, another strip behind it gives this idea of uh, the, you know, the film strips when you're looking at, at uh, film. 
I started to look at uh, the river. And this is the Essequibo River in Guyana. And the river is, warm, is brown because of the leaves that fall into the river and they stain the, it stains the water, as well as all the sediment and the silt that's under the water. It all stains the water brown. It's clean water, but it's just stained brown. So I started to think of the river in Guyana as a metaphor for movement and change. This is an image of my, my aunts and my uncles, and they were just touring around the interior of Guyana. In Guyana, most of the landscape is jungle. It's the Amazon forest. And, uh, but they are townsfolk. They lived, in the, they lived in the capital city, Georgetown. But they had very much access to the, uh, to the interior. So this is them just hanging out in the, um, you know, in the landscape there. And from these kind of influences, I created my thesis show that, um, my thesis show that, I think I showed that two years ago. So all of these images are transfers on double-sided matte mylar. They all hang from the ceiling, as you can see. And uh, in the distance, I had created this transfer on the wall of the pieces of that photograph of my aunt's on the hilltop. So again, you can see because of the, the limited amount of control I have over the transfer, the surface becomes cracked and creased. There's uh, folds, there's imperfections that add to the idea of memory and history um, past, right? And also for me, this fractured kind of past because a lot of these, all of these photographs I had taken myself when I had visited Guyana. And when I had gone to Guyana, I had a lot of memories of Guyana that were really formed from the stories of my family. They weren't my own, they were not my own memories. So although I really wanted to see certain streets and certain homes and certain houses, certain architecture, I wanted to go into the river because I learned so much about the Essequibo River. Um, I need to be scared about, uh, you know, going speedboating in the river. And I actually had something I wanted to read you, which is an excerpt of um, an excerpt of my thesis. Because along with the thesis exhibition, I had also written a book that was co a compilation of memories of Guyana, but filtered through the memories of my parents, and also <laughs> memories of my experience when I was in Guyana. OK, I'll just read this, this for you. Excerpt from A Trace, Existence of Time Past. We sit along the busy shoreline after some negotiating, making deals for how much, for how many. We climbed into a small blue and white speedboat. We were about to travel along the Essequibo River. I was disobeying my mother. Don't go into that speedboat, she said, waving her finger at me as I headed to Pearson Airport for Georgetown, Guyana, with my Aunt Joy. My aunt was taking the trip to reunite with a friend and with home. Like most of her siblings, she hadn't been back for many years and invited me to join her. A last-minute decision, without hesitation, I booked my flight for a back home that I had only experienced through family stories. After a trip to the Essequibo years ago, my mom returned with stories of feeling unsteady and unsafe in the boat. I understood. We were all tilted back in the tiny vessel. Mom probably felt that at any point, at any time, there may be a bump or a sharp unexpected turn that, may cause, that would cause her to topple over into the river. She did not want to consider the possibility of me falling in either. The water was so close to us. And of all the things to reflect on, I remembered that piranhas lived below. Don't put your hand in, that urge to caress the rapids as our boat bounded quickly across the surface had to be suppressed. Piranhas live in the water, don't put your hand in, keep your hands inside the boat. All my life I heard stories of encounters with killer piranhas, I just roll my eyes. The boat pulsated up and down as it, as it sped through. The wind blew past and through us. We hung tight as the rapids grew stronger. 
The river is immense, and at times it was hard to take in and absorb while teetering and tottering and struggling to steady myself. It was so loud that we were yelling at each other in order to be heard over the roar of the engine and the crash of the waves, both at the same pitch. I peered up and allowed my eyes to follow the flock of birds swirling, swirling together, forming an elegant S again and again. Eventually, we calmed as the river calmed and finally sat in silence to experience the beauty and quiet of the Essequibo. The color of the water has been described as cafe au lait. The water is stained by the tannins from the leaves that fall from the surrounding trees. The vegetation, rocks, and other naturally occurring elements, sediment that travels from shore to the depths of the river, so much happens below the surface. As we floated in silence, our guide pointed towards a line in the river. He explained that the line divided two directions of flow. Each flow had a slightly different shade of brown. We traveled along one, then crossed over into another. Moving from one place to the next place, we eventually traveled in the same direction as the water beneath us. This time, not as quickly, Tiny laps of waves hit our sides, then quieted as we fell in line, like the piranhas swimming alongside, waiting to nibble on my fingertips, and the birds flying in tandem above. We all moved from one place to a next place together. So that's just a small excerpt from my thesis. These are details of, uh, of the pieces. And these folks are from the Senior Guyanese Friendship Association. This group was formed when my mother came here within the, few years, the first few years that my mother came to Canada. She and her friends had decided to create this group in order to um, bring together their parents, who some of them did not even know lived, and like they, they, their friends lived in the same city as they did, and they did not even know. So they've been running since then, since 1973, and uh, they're just reading through uh, my thesis book. Um, this jar I also included in the thesis. This jar is full of uh, fruit and rum, other alcohols, the mix for black cake, and black cake is a Caribbean cake that is made in the Caribbean. And it stems from British pudding. Um, and so it's like, people say a colonial cake, although I don't like that name. But basically, it's a cake that, although it has all of the, this history that is just embedded into it, it brings together the Caribbean, really, around uh, holiday time. So in this jar, my sister, she now makes um, black cake. So I consider this a transfer from one from one generation to another generation, this idea of making this cake. Like, I don't know anybody else of my generation other than my sister, actually, who makes black cake. And in this jar, this has been soaking at this point for about a year. And uh, I know that year, my sister didn't bother make it, so uh, the next time she used it was this year, so it was soaking for over two years. And we just made it in that cake. Um, this is when the show was being taken down. So instead of having to remove uh, these pieces from the, from the space, they will forever be embedded into that ar architecture. Um, the works that I was doing where I had invited people in and I took images of them, um, at that time, I had invited all of these people in. They took, I took those photographs of them. There were about 30 people who came in, and we had a nice party and stuff. And so I created this series um, when I was in Chicago, actually. I was doing an internship, and I was uh, invited to participate in an exhibition there. So that was the first time I created this series called Blur. And so, again, using the transfer process, I printed off these images of folks, and then I transferred them onto the paper. Some of the paper would rip and crease and such because of the amount of pressure I used in order to rub off the paper in the whole process of the transfer, which creates this effect. 
the blur images for me are um, for me they are a um, they're they are an example in some way of how um, identity can be a mixture of so many things and how in many cases even when I look at uh, people of my parents' generations, when they came here, they came, as Dion Brand says, writer Dion Brand, she has, ex has explained this in her book, Bread Out of Stone, as they came here full of themselves, um, who they were, who they are, and who they will become. So this idea of folks living here with, you know, all of these different time frames um, embedded in them at the same time. This is just to show the process of the transfer. So those pieces, as well as this piece, was part of an exhibition called Blur that was part of Contact Photography Festival uh, 2017 at uh, Georgia Sherman Projects. So in this uh, alcove of the gallery, I created this, um, this large transfer. And then this is the exhibition in the rest of the space. This work is the work that, uh, this photograph is the beginning of the work that is in the exhibition, uh, Are You My Mother? This is a picture of my parents in 1971. At this point, my mother had been in Canada for three years, and she sent for my dad, and he had just come. So they were separated for three years. So when I was invited to be part of the exhibition here, here we are here, which was shown at the Royal Ontario Museum. The whole theme of that exhibition was about looking at blackness in, un, um, not unconventional, but looking at blackness in ways that we are not normally uh, told of blackness, I guess. And so immediately I considered this photograph because for me it wasn't, it's not a, a typical kind of immigrant photograph of people being here so young and in order for them to understand where they're going to be living for the rest of their lives and a way of reconnecting with each other, they are going hiking, hiking in Black Creek, this area that is neglected basically in Toronto. And uh, also when I look, when I think about my parents as townspeople from Georgetown, Guyana, it's almost like they were looking for the same kind of experience they would have back home. As town folks in Guyana, they would have occasionally gone into the interior to, to discover, you know, to go hiking, to go canoeing, whatever. And this is a similar kind of um, activity they were doing when they came to Canada. So I had printed off that image, I, I scanned that image, I enlarged it, then I printed it off, and then I created a transfer of it, and this is an image of it as part of the, the ROMS exhibition, here we are here. And these are some details of it. And as I said, it's in the exhibition tonight. The Smiths I started using, I don't know why that <laughs> this image is here, but the Smiths I started using in these different kinds of ways of movement. And this is actually the final image of another animation I did. The same kind of process in which I draw one of the characters, I take a snap, then I draw the next character, taking a snap, also erasing the first image, but you can still see the shadow of that first frame and the second frame. Similar, but not as complex as William Kendridge, I guess, where he creates these drawings, these wonderful animations, of drawings whereby you can see the frame in the previous frame in the current frame. Oops, this is going to come out very well. This is another piece with the Smiths. Uh, this is shown at um, Thames Gallery in Chatham. And this is another way of looking at the uh, my thesis show of the Essequibo, of uh, the transfers of the Essequibo River. I like this installed because you can actually see the work in the surface of the mylar. And then I was invited to Lagos Photo Festival not too long ago, about four months ago. And so this is their, um, their install of that same work. So currently, in a way, I'm doing a residency at the Art Gallery of Ontario. Um, 
I was, uh, so when I had first um, gone to the AGO, I had asked them if they could give us a tour of the gallery, all, but all the, the back areas of the gallery, not only the, ca the uh, actual galleries. And um, when I had gone to the photo department, I had just liked the way that they were so enthusiastic about take, documenting the artworks of the gallery. So I ha I'd come up with this idea of asking people to give me objects of which I would get documented by the AGO, and then I would manipulate them through transfers. Initially, I was going to do drawings, but it never ended up that way. Um, so they had put together in the um, in the studio that they gave us. I put to, they put together a, a a little photo booth, and I would take these images of some of these objects. So these are the images that I took. So this is a oops. this is a coal pot. So uh, this is a coal pot for making food. This is a calabash. So calabash comes from trees, you have to cut it in half, dig out the insides, and then a lot of people, they, they carve into the surface of it these designs. This is my aunt's calabash that she had made, but then it was damaged, and so she had the person who made it um, repair it, and how we ended up repairing it is stitching it. So I just thought that was quite interesting. And this is a, uh, a pointer broom. And like all members of my family have a pointer broom, and I always hear I, uh, these stories about the pointer broom and everybody in the family having to clean the house with their pointer broom. This is a, a jewelry box that I have that I bought when I was in Guyana to replace another jewelry box that my grandmother gave me that had since broken. And most people, again, in my family have jewelry boxes that are covered with all of these shells. So the ways that this piece was taken, at the AGO, they used this stack photo method in order to take certain objects in the gallery. It allows for a very focused image. What they do is they take a photo from the front to the back of the object, and then they stack all the images on top, and so it creates a longer depth of field. So from the back, so if you look at the, um, the shell at the very back, it is, as, it is as in focus as the front of the object. So for me, I was using it as a metaphor for not being able to uh, dismiss what is present. Every aspect of this object cannot be dismissed. These pieces are transfers that I did from the photographs I had taken. This is a bottle of pepper sauce. And so the, what is written in the bottle doesn't really matter. A lot of people who make pepper sauce in the Caribbean, once they see this bottle, they know it's pepper sauce. They know that this is something savory and hot inside. And, um, and this is the gallery that I'll be having an exhibition in. Actually, the opening is on Friday at A Space Gallery. And in one section of the gallery, I will have um, an audio of all of the people who have given me these objects describing and reminiscing about their objects. And then this pointer room, I had used Photoshop to create these, you know, to make it look like it's in movement, printed it off in these small sections and transferred it to the wall. Some of the plinths that they have in the space I had covered with um, some of the objects I was given and then some of the objects I'm also pl placing on the plinth. So a woman had given me this iron that was owned by her grandmother and another friend of mine gave me this handkerchief which I transferred to the plinth and so I'm kind of creating a a relationship between those two. And the same thing with this doily, as well as with the jewelry box and the powder box. And uh, that's it. I had also wanted to show you a, uh, how do I
This is, um, I just wanted to show you some, <coughs> some images of a uh, residency I did in Brazil last year. I was invited to be part of Sacatar, which is located on the island called Itaparica, which is off the coast of Salvador in Bahia, Brazil. So while I was there, I had first started creating these leaf sheets. I really have nothing much to say about them. I just liked, you know, the, thinking through some ideas by taking up some leaves and gluing them together. And then I realized, I don't have images of this there though, but um, whenever I would walk through the town, I would take pictures of the size of houses and such, and because of over time, some of the houses would wear down, it ended up having a similar kind of quality to these sheets. So similar to this kind of uh, thing here where the, the surface of these buildings are all worn down in some areas. And then I started to practice with creating these transfers on the sides of buildings. This pattern was a pattern that I had found on another building. A lot of the buildings had these tiles, these beautiful tile designs. Many times I look at uh, clothes lines as this idea of absence and presence, um, how people use these things and when they're hanging there, I can still feel the people behind them. And so I had created a series of drawings of clothes, of, uh, clothes lines that I would find in the town. And I started to take these clotheslines and superimpose them on some of the buildings that were in the town. This um, area is called Fonch de Bica. It is a, it's a water park. And a lot of people who are touring the area, they would come by and there's like all these, um, all these taps of flowing water throughout the, the, the water park. And so they would go and they refresh their face because of the heat or they fill up their bottle. Um, sometimes, um, you know, businesses would come in and fill up their bottles for their kiosks. So we found that this space would be a perfect place to create one of, to transfer a drawing of a clothesline. Because in this area, women used to wash clothes in order to sustain their families. So I took one of my drawings and I printed it off on eight and a half by 11. And I had to number everything, so I transferred everything correctly. This is a, the perfect studio, because as I was transferring things and I needed water, I needed access to water in order to wash off the paper, the water was right there for me. All I had to do was continually uh, refill my bucket, and it was nice and hot, and I, I just could refresh my face, freshen up. Then I created a poem, and I also transferred the poem to the, um, to the wall. And the poem basically talks about water and what it means and clothes that are waving in the wind and to allow it to grace your face. And it says an homage to the, to the uh, washerwomen that work in the local area to sustain their families. This was the uh, this is the piece that I created there. And I guess lastly, um, when I was talking about the. Um, the Smiths and the and creating these animations out of them. I'm still creating these. These are something that I do ongoingly, like these simple animations that are silly of the Smiths kissing and turning where I have ones where I want them to um, dance into house music or going into space. Just like these these uh, 
silly, carefree kind of animations. Um, and and then lastly, I'll just show you. This is the piece uh, we gather. That is the the animation where I was telling you about the accumulation of people over time. And that's it. I Great. Think. Thank you.